Right. So we had an earthquake of magnitude 4.8 at approximately 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. Um, so far, we've had one aftershock, which was a magnitude 2 um, and may not have been felt um, about an hour later. And, of course, this main shock, the magnitude 4.8, was widely felt across the northeast U.S. from Washington, D.C., all the way to Boston. Um, it's unlikely to cause significant damage. But it is, you know, the largest earthquake within about 150 kilometers since at least 1950. So um, certainly surprised a lot of folks. Now, Dara, I know that you're a seismologist. So, I mean, this is your expertise. How does right. all of this happen? Well, there are faults all across um, the continent. Um, and these are basically just weak points in the bedrock. Um, and... We have tectonic plates that are moving um, all around the Earth, and they put pressure on these weak spots in the rock, these faults. And when enough pressure builds up, they, it will cause the weak spots to, or the rocks on either, either side of the weak spot to move suddenly, um, and we feel that as an earthquake. So... I know that certain places in the United States are more susceptible to this. I think anytime we think about earthquakes, we tend to think about California. Why right. would something like this happen here on the East Coast? So even though California is what we think of because it has those really large faults, the San Andreas, for example, um, that we all think about, there are faults all over. And they're generally smaller faults, which means that they can only have a smaller magnitude earthquake. So whereas the San Andreas may be able to uh, have an earthquake of magnitude 8 or so um, in the largest. Um, on the East Coast, earthquakes can't get that big because the faults are not quite as big. But there are faults everywhere, and they're all under pressure from the moving tectonic plate. Now, Dara, we're just now getting word here of a aftershock of magnitude 2.0. Uh, this was in the right. same area over in New Jersey how often does that happen where you have the main shock and then the aftershock? And should we anticipate seeing additional aftershocks? All earthquakes are part of what we call earthquake sequences. So you have a main shock, which is the largest magnitude event in the sequence. And it's generally followed by an aftershock sequence that will decay with size of the aftershocks, the magnitude of the aftershocks, and the frequency of the aftershocks with time. So right now, um, over the next week or so, there's about a 16% chance of an earthquake, another earthquake in the magnitude 4 range, hmm. and a 46% chance of uh, magnitude 3 um, in the next week. So we expect those to just taper off fully um, over the next couple of weeks. And Dara, is there any way that we can forecast exactly within the next three to seven days that we could get another one, whether or not it's a 3.0 or even possibly a 4.0? The best we can, so we can't predict earthquakes. We can't tell you how big and exactly where and what time, but we can do forecasting, which is estimating the probabilities of earthquakes um, in the region. And right now, um, as I said, there's a 16% chance of another earthquake in the magnitude 4 range over the next week and a 3% chance of a magnitude 5 or larger. Interesting. Um, so stuff. that would that would mean having a larger earthquake would mean that this 4.8 is a foreshock. But, of course, we for now it's the main shock because we um, don't have a larger earthquake. Now, on the record. because the folks in California, I mean, they are used to this. Uh, the folks across right. the East Coast, we are not used to this at all. So what can we do to prepare for the next one? So anytime you feel shaking, um, the best thing to do is to drop cover and hold on. So what that means is to get low, get under something sturdy like a table and hold on to those table legs. And what, what that's meant to do is, you know, if something were to fall off the walls, um, then it would not hit you and you would be safe. Um, so that's, that's the best thing to do. Earthquakes on the East Coast are felt over a very large area because the geology on the East Coast is different from the geology on the West Coast. So even small earthquakes will be felt over, small magnitude earthquakes will be felt over a much larger area than, say, a 4.8 in Los Angeles.